Hello, hello everyone. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to, well I am going to, um, finally film my uh, five reasons I like to color tag video. Uh, this tag was created by Adult Coloring with Candice. I believe that is the name of her channel and I think I finally got it right this time. Um, so I'm just going to, um, so you have something to look at while I talk, I'm going to color in Joanna Bassford's uh, Worlds of Wonder. And I'm doing just the back insert page and right now I'm just basing it all with my super tips. So that is what I'm going to do. This is going to be a relatively quick um, video, I think. So um, let's get started. We're going to start on this little house thing here. Um, so five reasons I like to color. And I, and I had to think about this one a little bit uh, because the main reason why I like to color is because it helps me kind of forget about not necessarily forget about I won't say forget about it helps me kind of um what's the word I'm looking for I don't want to say forget about because it sounds kind of bad but if if I'm having a bad day or something like that I know that I can just um kind of you know, crack open a color book and just color and eventually, you know, whatever kind of bad feelings or sad feelings or unwanted feelings I'm having will kind of just dissipate after a while. Um, it doesn't happen right away all the time, but most of the time, you know, I know I can just come sit down and I can, especially if I'm doing a page like this, I can just pick some colors and let my mind just kind of enjoy the silence. Or if I'm watching TV as well, then, you know, I can enjoy a TV show and color and kind of forget about, you know, the not so good day I'm having and that's really the main reason why I do it. Um, so coming up with the other four, it wasn't hard, but it wasn't exactly, you know, oh, I got four others right out the gate. Um, you know, because the main reason I do it, like I said, is to de-stress, I guess we can call it, uh, you know, it's not. I'm not saying that, you know, I have a lot of, I mean, I have a lot of stress. I mean, who doesn't, you know, but it's not, you know, the bad stress is not every day, all day, because I do things to either forget about it or just kind of put it out of my mind for a little bit. So it's not driving me crazy, you know, um, so, another or the second reason, I would definitely have to say the community. The people that I have met, even the ones that I don't or that aren't on YouTube anymore or don't watch YouTube anymore or, you know, kind of just, I guess, left the hobby. Um the people in the community for the most part are really great um you know i have witnessed some not so great ones and some very interesting things go down in the coloring community but for the most part um you know the community is really great really helpful you know you ask a question and I'm going to, I'm going to do that. There we go. You ask a question and you can almost guarantee you'll get an answer. And most of the time you get an answer really quick. 
you know, people taking time out of their day to watch your videos or to watch others' videos and comment and, you know, hold a whole conversation in the comment section. The live streams, I really enjoy watching because it's it's like having a bunch of friends, you know, it's like they're there with you while you're coloring and everybody's coloring and talking around the table and laughing. That's kind of what I imagine when um, I'm in the live streams because that's what it feels like. It feels like I've got, you know, all my color friends over and we're all around the table eating snacks and making jokes and things like that. So I think the community is, is pretty great. Um, you know, and I, I have more than one hobby and I have to say that the coloring community so far to me is the least toxic. <laughs> so you know, there are some genuine people out there who genuinely, you know, enjoy the company of other colorists. And I think that's really great. And especially if you're having a bad day, you know, a lot of them are right there for you. They're praying for you. They're, you know, and it's genuine. It's not, you know, it's not fake. It's not, um... You know, you don't have to worry about, oh, is this person, like, being true? Are they being genuine? Or are they just, you know, um, doing it to make themselves feel good? Because there are people out there like that who, you know, they they're, they want to make themselves feel good. So they're like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm praying for you. But in all reality, they're like, oh, yeah, I'm glad that didn't happen because now I can go do it, you know, type of thing. So... I haven't come across any, you know, people who seem like that type of person. So, I have nothing but good things to say about the coloring community so far. Um, hopefully, I didn't just jinx it. <laughs> but the community is great. I do love you guys. Um, I know that if I have any type of question, and it doesn't even have to be just coloring related... Some somebody in this community will have the answer and I can guarantee you they will help me figure it out. So that's another reason why I like to color because the community is um you know, they're helpful, they're they're nice, genuine people for the most part. And they're right there with you and most um, you know, whatever you're going through, chances are somebody else is going through it or has went through it and they you know can help you get through it as well and they will they will take time out of their day to help and i think that's great um another reason or reason number three uh that i like to color is basically to help me explore other um art type mediums without having to worry about drawing everything out myself and then by the time I get to the coloring part I'm like basically burnt out so um I like that I can just open a book and decide one day that I'm going to do watercolor or decide okay today I'm going to um you know, I'm going to try some chalk pastels today. It's just different mediums where I don't have to worry about drawing and then not wanting to really color after or abandoning the project because by the time I'm done drawing it, it's just I'm kind of over it and don't want to color it. And believe it or not, that happens quite a bit with me. I'll draw something and then I don't want to color it. Uh, And I like... For instance, I was drawing, or I had drawn this picture just so that I can um, try watercolors. But by the time I was done sketching the picture itself, I didn't quite, you know, finish it. So, what I am getting at is I can crack open a book and 
the drawings are already there. So I don't have to do anything other than play around with whatever medium it is I'm trying to play around with that day. Um, that's another reason because I want to get used to like different mediums. Like right now I'm using my super tips and it's not very often that I use them. So I told myself I was going to base this whole page in super tips and then, you know, I can go back in and shade with my pencils later if I want. But I wanted to at least have a base of super tips so I, so I know, hey, I I can use these super tips and, um, you know, they're not just sitting on my desk looking pretty, but they're actually being used. So... I, I want to be able to, you know, go through my supplies and use them and not have to say, oh, well, this is just sitting here and I don't really use it. I want to be able to use everything and be good at using all of my supplies as well. I mean, I don't, not necessarily a professional or anything, but I want to be good enough to know how to use it at at least an intermediate level where I can say okay I I've used this I know how to use it and then I can decide okay I'd like to use this or I don't like to use it and I'm finding with these super tips that um I do like them I wish the nibs were just a tad bit smaller because a lot of the times it, you know, it'll go outside the line or I don't really want to get too close to the edge because I know it'll run over into something else. And the only way that I will be able to find that out for myself is if, um, you know, is if I use them. I would have never known that if I hadn't, uh, you know, used them. And I don't mind, you know, if it goes outside the lines, most cases. Um, but if I'm really, like, trying to do something with my pencils and they start, you know, flying out of the line and going all over the place, or even with my pens or whatever it is I'm using... You know, I'm going to know, like, okay, just from me using them on this page, I know if it's a page that I'm really, really wanting to be, you know, pretty and perfect and not a single mistake on it, I know not to use my super tips or to at least be really, really, really careful when I do it because I know now that even if... You think it's not going outside the lines. Um, it will. <laughs> It'll go outside the lines on you and you'll you'll be like, what happened? You know, I was being careful, but that's just how they are. But aside from, you know, that I'm actually finding that I do like using the super tips. Um, so another reason, reason, oh my reason I like to color and this is reason um number four are we on four uh let's see I said the de-stressing the community the different yeah four okay so reason number four would definitely be the teaching and the learning and sharing aspect of it uh when I first started out, I would just, I knew nothing of shading. I was just kind of like, okay, I know I can, you know, put these colors down anywhere because it's what I want it to be. But I had no direction of color palette. I have no, nothing. It was just kind of like, you know put these colors down and hope for the best 
and you know i had no idea about the different you know products and the different things that they do and just just nothing i was just throwing down literally throwing down color on the page and um I started watching YouTube. I don't even know how I came across the YouTube videos, to be honest. But I started watching just random YouTube videos. I couldn't tell you who I was watching. Um, and I, you know, started seeing, oh, okay, what's this product? And, okay, what's Prismacolor? And I was like, okay. And then... I seen the the polychromos and I was like, oh, those pencils look beautiful. I had no idea if I was going to like them or not. I was like, they look cool. I want them. And, you know, before I bought them, which I ultimately didn't end up buying them. My uh, boyfriend actually bought them for me. But um, before I got them, there was a lady she was explaining and I don't even remember who she was. It was just a lady in one of the live streams that I just so happened to be in. And she was like, okay, you know, she broke it down and she explained, um, you know, what the hardness of the polychromos and how they weren't soft and how, you know, this or that. And she was like, you know, a lot of people prefer the Prisma colors because they're soft. She was like, but be careful because they break a lot. And that right there, I was like, oh no. I was like, okay, so I don't want that to be my first set because if my pencils start breaking and, you know, I had started with Crayolas and I was already having like some issues with the Crayolas with breaking. Um, I would sharpen them and the lead would break and just, it was, it was probably most likely user error at the time, but, um, they would break. And so when she said that, I was like, oh no, I was like, okay, I'm going to go with, um, the poly. She said, because she, she had never had a problem with her polys breaking. Um, but they were a harder pencil and they would take some work getting used to. And I was like, okay, well, I've got nothing else better to do. So I don't mind, you know, learning how to use these. And, but when I got them, it didn't take me much work, much effort at all to, you know, to learn how to use them and to fall in love with them. And when I tell you, I was like, oh my God, these are the best pencils in the world. What? I've been missing out. And from there, it was kind of like, okay, well, now I kind of want to see what, what the Prisma colors are like compared to these. And, you know, it just kind of kicked off from there. And it was like I was sharing my thoughts and people were sharing their thoughts. And I'd go to the live stream and I'd be like, hey, I just got these. Do they always do this? What's the best sharpener? And I just love hearing everybody's ideas and you know, I love learning like, okay, well, if you're going to, you know, get these, then be careful because of this. And that's across the board with the color books as well. Not just the supplies, the color books. They were like, hey, the paper in this, they're not going to work well with your poly. So be careful when you get it, you know. And that also kind of falls under the community is what I mean when I said, you know, they're were a lot of people just ready and willing to help and um I think that without that help and without those warnings and things like that you know I feel like a lot of us would waste a lot of money because it'd be a lot of trial and error and you know with especially with these, some of these budget brands it'd be a lot of more error than trial so um, it's good that some of us are out there willing to, you know, take the plunge fall of those bad products and give the warning to everybody else like, hey, don't, don't do it. You know, uh, let me tell you, these, these were breaking, they were cheap, they were this, don't do it, don't waste your money. And I like that, you know, 
the fact that, you know, someone is willing to help teach, like, you know, okay, well, if you're trying to blend, then you'll want something like the Prismacolors. They're great with blending if you're good with layering. And then they go into explaining what layering even is. And I think that is just a good thing. You know, it's a good feeling to know, hey, I can hop on YouTube or in one of the millions of Facebook coloring groups that's out there, ask a question, and my question will get answered. It will get answered, guaranteed, by somebody. And I think that's really good, too. So... Um, my last and final reason why I like to color would definitely be, um, the portability. And by portability, I mean, like, um, if I am going to, like, a doctor's appointment or if I'm going somewhere where I know it's going to be a long wait, or somewhat of a long wait or any kind of wait to where I'm like, okay, I'm going to be sitting there and I don't want to be on my phone the whole entire wait. Um, I know that I can just grab a coloring book and they come in so many different sizes and things. So guarantee I'm going to have one to fit my backpack. Um, you know, I can figure out which supply I want to take with me. Whether it be if I want to do pencils that day or if I'm like, well, it's not a long wait. So I'll just grab, um, I'll grab a couple of my super tips and once, you know, I have my super tips, it's like, okay, I'm going to work on, you know, filling in some greens on the page. So let me grab my green super tips and I can just grab them and go and be you know a, have have it available to me to where I can just toss it in my bag and be good to go be on my way and while I'm waiting I have something that would keep me busy and keep me kind of happy at the same time because you know when you're especially at the doctor's office, you know, and you're going for results or, you know, uh, kind of, you know, just anything. The doctors in general, they, they make me nervous. So going to the doctor in general, uh, you know, it's kind of like you don't know what they're going to say, what they're going to find out, what's going to happen, what kind of shots you have to get. So it's kind of like coloring you can take it with you to kind of ease your mind before your appointment um or like if you're going to the dmv and you got to sit there and wait for those numbers to be called uh and you're and you know it's a drag you can take your your color book with you and so while you're waiting for you know your number to be called you have something to keep you busy and keep you from losing your mind at the DMV. Um, it's just the portability is just great because, and it doesn't always have to be, you can all, you can take something different for each appointment, you know, a different book. You, you can designate like, okay, well, this is my doctor's appointment book. So whenever I go to the doctor, I'm going to grab this book. But this book over here is going to be for, you know, DMV or dentist appointments or whatever the case may be, you know, you can do it that way if you know, well, it's a really long wait and like in DMV, those waits can be hours. So, you know, okay, I can take my, you know, I can take my watercolors or I can actually take my pencils and focus on this whip that I've been working on, but I put away because, you know, it takes a lot of time. And I can work on this whip now because I'm going to have that time waiting, uh, you know, at the DMV. So, you know, the portability is also another reason. And there's there's other reasons um, as well that I like coloring. But I'm going to keep it limited to five because that is the tag. But... We all know that we can sit and, if given the time, we can just 
come up with loads and loads and loads of reasons why, you know, and it may be a little harder for some and, you know, than others, but I'm sure if, like I said, given the time, we can come up with loads and it's just a happy thing to do and a nice happy hobby to have. Um, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, well, not a lot of people, but there are some that's like, oh, you know, colorings for children. You still color? Like, believe it or not, I get asked that question. But the majority, you know, they're like, oh, you like the color? Oh, that's cool. That page is nice, you know. And that's that's a pretty good um, thing to hear as well. But I'm going to limit this to five. So here is what I have so far. And this is from using my super tips that, you know, I don't really use. And, and not just my super tips, but my colors or my watermark markers in general, rather. Um, you know, it's not quite finished yet. There are some bits I like to add. But for the sake of this video, that is what I have. And just from doing this page, I've learned... Like I said, what I like and what I don't like about the super tips. So, or water markers in general. So, with that being said, those are my five reasons why I like to color. Um, just a recap for de-stressing is my number one. My number two is the community. A number three is, you know, exploring different types of mediums and supplies Number four is the teaching, the learning, and the sharing between each other. And number five is the portability of it all. So I want to tag anyone in this video who has not participated in this tag yet and wants to, um, feel free to put it on there because everybody's going to have different, you know, uh, reasons why and there are others who want to hear you know your reasons why and you may not you may think oh it's the same as everyone else's we still want to hear it <laughs> even if it's just to have something to have on in the background while we color we still want to hear it so if you have a youtube channel and you haven't done it yet feel free to do it and um, again this tag was created by adult coloring with candace um she is also on youtube and sorry candace this video is like a million years late <laughs> i am trying to catch up on all my videos and so um you might see a slew of videos come out this week but i want to thank everyone for watching as usual thank you for taking time out of your day to watch my videos and come over to my channel i really appreciate it so I will see you guys next video and again, thank you for watching.